Wild turkeys today are a thriving game bird. They're found in every state except Alaska with a population at over 6 million. The five North American subspecies of wild turkey include Miriams, Rio Grande, Goulds, Easterns, and Osceola. The Miriams turkey is found mostly in the western mountain states. You can find them not only in ponderosa pine forests, but lurking in a variety of vegetation types at elevations up to 10,000 feet. The Rio Grande is native to the semi-arid range of the southern Great Plains states. It received its common name from the Rio Grande River, which flows near this area. Rio Grandes have expanded their range and been introduced into Nevada, Oregon, Washington, Wyoming, Utah, South Dakota, and California. In many cases, their location is determined by the presence of their preferred roosting tree, the cottonwood. The least well-known of the five wild turkey subspecies is the Goulds, or Mexican wild turkey. It's found in the mountains of northern Mexico and in the United States in portions of Arizona and New Mexico along the Mexico-United States border. The Goulds turkey has the largest body frame of any of the five North American subspecies, with longer legs, larger feet, and larger center tail feathers than any other wild turkey. Goulds are commonly found in underbrush along creek beds or areas of thick brush with scattered openings in mountainous regions. Easterns are the most populous of the five North American subspecies. They're found throughout the eastern United States and have been transplanted to some western states as well. Easterns are also the heaviest of the five subspecies. Some of the corn-fed gobblers in Iowa, Wisconsin, and Missouri commonly weigh in at 25 pounds, with exceptional gobblers tipping the scales at over 30 pounds. The Osceola turkey is also known as the Florida turkey. They're a unique and highly sought after subspecies of the wild turkey that are found only on the Florida peninsula. The Osceola is the smallest and one of the most challenging subspecies of turkey to hunt. A mature tom will weigh only around 16 to 18 pounds, but what he lacks in weight he makes up for with longer spurs and beards on the average than other subspecies. Nowadays, there are lots of gobblers out there, but this hasn't always been the case. Turkeys were a vital and abundant food source back in pre-colonial times. As European settlers arrived in what later became the United States, over-harvesting and the loss of habitat took their toll on Old Tom's numbers. Thankfully, through conservation efforts of groups like the National Wild Turkey Federation and responsible hunting, the range of wild turkey is larger than ever, and their numbers just keep getting better every year. When they're under a year old, male turkeys are called jakes, toms when they're over a year old. These gobblers can weigh more than 20 pounds and despite their size, can burst into over a 25 mile per hour run and fly at speeds over 50 miles an hour. Female adult turkeys are called hens, first year ladies all share the name Jenny, and turkey chicks are known as poults. An adult hen usually reaches a weight of about 10 or 12 pounds. Adult gobblers and a small percentage of hens have a modified feather called a beard that stands out from the breast. On the inside of Tom's leg, we also find spurs, a claw-like growth that can reach a sharp two inches on an older boss Tom. A gobbler's head and neck are usually wider than a hen's due to less head feathering. And during the spring mating season, Old Tom's head becomes a multicolored beacon taken on a combination of white, blue, and red in varying degrees as he struts for the attention of the hens. If you look carefully, you can tell the difference between a Tom and a Jake when they fan out their tail feathers. The immature Jake's middle feathers stand out higher than the rest, but a Tom is a nice even fan with all his tail feathers at the same length. All turkeys have excellent hearing and daytime eyesight, their field of vision is a full 270 degrees, but unlike white-tailed deer, for example, turkeys can distinguish colors in the field. I guess that explains why Tom makes such a colorful show for the ladies every spring. For the most part, these birds of a feather do flock together. Wild turkeys separate into flocks based on sex and to some extent age. In the summer months, the basic unit is the family flock, consisting of a hen and her poults. During late summer and fall, multiple hen brood flocks begin to collect together. Outside the spring breeding season, toms form small flocks that rarely associate with hens. However, in winter, all turkeys come together forming large flocks, at times amounting to several hundred birds. 
Within all these flocks, the pecking order has older, larger, and more dominant birds taking charge. Generally, wild turkeys roost in trees at night. Then they head out at daybreak to begin the day's activities, which consists of foraging for just about anything. Insects, plants, fruits, nuts, tree buds, you name it. Hey, if a turkey can scratch it up with his big old feet or nip it out of the air with his beak, he's probably going to eat it.